Alter Blade by Emily Toriel. Chapter 1. The Alter Blade Club. A warm light illuminated the stage, the audience waiting for us in hushed silence. As Felicity mentally prepared herself for the adventure ahead, music slowly filled the room, greeting us with the soft tones of guitar and strings. Every session of Alter Blade was a magical experience. My heart skipped a beat as Felicity opened her eyes and smiled. Here is where our story begins. Katie. Each house in our neighborhood was constructed in the same style with worn brick exteriors. My mother once told me that when Greendale was in the process of being built, our neighborhood was among the first to be used as housing. It was a planned community, with streets named after flowers or trees, and houses that matched the houses surrounding it. The relatively small population meant that everyone in town knew each other, and that built a real sense of community among those who lived here. Many stayed in Greendale their whole lives, choosing to raise a family of their own in the place where they grew up. Our town has only one high school, Greendale Catholic High. Despite traditionally being a Catholic school, most of the common trademarks of a religious school had faded with time. The only aspect that remained was our green and white uniforms that no one felt the need to change. It certainly made it easier for me to pick what to wear every morning. Greendale Catholic High is like every other school in a lot of ways. We attend classes, take tests, and participate in club activities. The afternoon is filled with the murmur of academia, and after school, you can hear the squeak of shoes in the gym as the sports clubs practice for their next game. But of all the clubs available, only one is the pride of our school. It's not just our school, either. Every high school in the country is required to offer the same club, the one we all get the most excited for. The Alter Boy Club! It's actually a really big deal. The role-playing tabletop game is fairly new, gaining momentum over the past couple of years since its initial release. One person acts as a storyteller to guide a group of players on amazing adventures in different fantasy settings, and these game sessions are often played in front of a large crowd of people. There are many mysteries surrounding the creation of the game, each one more outlandish than the last. Websites dedicated to Alter Blade conspiracy theories popped up all over the internet not long after the game was first released to the public. I don't really believe any of them, though. Players of the game are drawn to Alter Blade for its unique character creation and combat system. In addition to casting magical spells and attacking with weapons, every character can potentially alter the course of events by using special skills and abilities that relate to their character. Whenever a player wants to invoke an ability and shift the tide of battle in their favor, as long as the action makes sense for their character, they can use an Alter Token. The ever-changing tempo of an Alter Blade session is exciting, and it can be a really magical experience to watch the stories unfold. Alter Blade clubs around the country mesmerize the audience with thrilling tales of adventure and magic. Most schools fill their auditorium every week with students and members of the public who show up just to watch their performance. Others rent out larger spaces just to meet the demand, complete with concession stands and elaborate decorations celebrating the event. At least, that's how it's supposed to be. I'm part of the Alter Blade Club that draws the smallest crowd out of every high school. Our personalities don't always mesh well, and our campaign isn't always successful. There are often a lot of empty seats in the audience when we play the game. It's a little bit upsetting sometimes, but the people who do choose to show up are always happy to see us. They cheer us on when we're struggling during a battle, and congratulate us when we triumph. It fills me with pride to feel their support every week. Despite our small audience, they sell special merchandise outside the school auditorium during our game sessions. It's always surprising to me how many people will buy coffee mugs and shirts with the faces of our Alter Blade characters printed on them. If the characters we play in the game can bring them joy and inspire them to create stories of their own, then it makes me really happy to be a part of that experience. A shared love of something can really bring people together. I have to thank Isaiah for introducing me to the world of Alter Blade. I often feel so uncomfortable in my own skin. Social situations put me on edge, and it makes me feel like I want to escape. It can be really exhausting. Part of the magic of role-playing games is the ability to be someone else, if only for a short while. At school, I'm the shy, introverted Caitlin. I like to play role-playing games and read fantasy novels, but there's nothing amazing or magical about me in real life. In the fantasy world of Alter Blade, however, I can become Lunaria Starlight, a magical lunar elf cleric. Like the magical girls I love, I can wave my weapon and cast healing magic on my friends. I can really help people. Lunaria can be bright and happy and cheer them on when they need it the most. When I put myself into the role of her character, it really feels like part of me is being healed as well. 
course, being in the Altar Blade Club wouldn't be the same without a fun group of friends to play with. We always try to lift each other up when we're feeling unsure of ourselves and challenge each other with creative and crazy schemes. I really cherish the time we spend together in that world. If watching us create stories in Altar Blade can help others learn to love the game as well, even better. In my first year at Greendale Catholic High, my life changed in a multitude of ways. It was thrilling and sometimes frightening, but I knew that I could get through anything life threw at me as long as my friends were by my side. They gave me hope and helped me believe that I could become the heroine of justice I always aspired to be. Everything was normal in the beginning. I went to school like normal, spent time with my friends like normal, and participated in the Alter Blade Club like normal. The routine was comfortable and familiar, and I was perfectly content to live out my high school days in that manner, until the eventual day when I graduated and joined the working world of adults. Back then, I was blissfully unaware of how the course of my life would change in the short span of a few days. Of course, there's no way to predict when these things will happen. All you can do is hope that when the time comes, you can summon the courage to face it. Let me tell you my story, and the role that fate had in store for me. My name is Caitlin Ash. But my friends in the Alter Blade Club usually call me Katie. My earliest childhood memories were made in my hometown of San Diego, but then I moved to Wisconsin with my mother and my younger sister when I reached my first year of middle school. Our neighbors often ask why we would choose to move from a sunny place like California to a place that gets so cold. While I do miss the memories of warm beaches and tall palm trees, this place does have its charms. Fluffy clouds drifted by overhead as I sat under my favorite tree in the courtyard of our school, reading a book. It was still fairly early in the morning, so the wide green expanse of the yard was still calm and quiet. I could hear the murmur of life within the school's walls if I focused on it, but this courtyard made for a nice spot to read a book before the rest of the students arrived for the day. After finishing the final page of the story, I sighed and shut the book with a quiet snap before closing my eyes, gently resting my head against the tree at my back. The cool early morning breeze felt nice against my skin. If I didn't have an Alter Blade Club session to look forward to this afternoon, I would want to spend the whole school day out here. I could enjoy the warm sunshine while reading another book. My teachers would surely scold me though. <laughs> what a good book. Which one should I read next, I wonder? People are naturally drawn to fantasy stories. There are fantastical worlds, people wielding magical powers, dragons, and so many other things that you can never find here in reality. It's easy to see why they're so popular these days. They serve as a pleasant escape from everyday life. Most people dream of having a special purpose or amazing abilities. I have loved magical girl stories ever since I was a young child. Sparkling heroines saving the day, using their magic to help others. Whether they are healing the injured or rescuing an animal in need, they always do their best to use their magic to improve the lives of others. I can only hope that someday I'll be able to help someone as well and really make a difference in their life. I can dream, right? A girl from my class approached the tree, wearing the same uniform and carrying the same school bag on her shoulder. Despite sitting in front of me in class, I couldn't remember ever talking to her before. I think her name was... Lissa? Her height intimidated me a bit but she gave me a smile all the same. Caitlin, class is about to start. We should get going. I glanced over at the school building just as the first bell rang. The quiet murmur of life I heard earlier had grown louder as students made their way to class. If we hurried, we could still make it to our classroom before we were considered late. Okay, I replied, standing up from the grassy yard and picking up my bag from the ground beside the tree. Pfft. Lissa suppressed a laugh as she pointed to my uniform. You've got grass on your skirt. D do I? I quickly looked down at my uniform and found several blades of grass sticking to my skirt. My cheeks burned with embarrassment as I brushed them away. <laughs> anyway, let's go. I followed Lissa through the entrance to the school, sliding the book into my bag for safekeeping. The hallway was fairly empty aside from a few stragglers like me who had lost track of the time and were just hoping that we wouldn't be late for class. Almost there. I sighed in relief when I finally reached my desk, just in time for the second bell. Lissa gave me a thumbs up before taking her seat in front of me. I did my best to smile in return. I'd better check my notes in case the teacher calls on me. I flipped open my notebook and found a scribbled note from Isaiah written in the margin. He drew a small cartoon of his face, his glasses glinting. Remember this section was written beside it, along with an arrow pointing to a paragraph of notes. I couldn't help but smile when I saw it and tried to stifle my laughter so I wouldn't get scolded by the teacher. My friend Isaiah Ishikawa always helps me study. We met not long after I moved to Greendale with my family, and now we're even in a club together. His grades are always at the top of the class. Despite being in the year ahead of me, he makes time to help me with my schoolwork on top of his own studies. He can be a strict teacher at times, but he's a good friend. 
While others may find my love of magical girls weird, he supports my interests and even watches the shows with me. Isaiah is the one who first introduced me to Alter Blade. There's something magical about watching players create stories together, and it made my heart race with excitement when he taught me how to play. I had fond memories of playing the game with him at my house, but I was really nervous when he first suggested that I join his Alter Blade club once I reached high school. Playing Alter Blade with him was one thing, but with other people? I remember the first time I stood outside the door of the club room. To everyone else, it looked the same as the other doors in the club corridor. But to me, it was an intimidating gate that held unknown horrors beyond its imposing height. My heart pounded in my ears, and I was frozen in place with anxiety. Isaiah was with me, gently patting my back in an attempt to help me calm down. He told me that the other students in the club would be nice to me, but their faces were empty bores in my mind. Are you sure it's okay? I stammered, gripping the handle of my bag tightly while frowning at Isaiah, my knuckles turning white from the tension. Maybe it wasn't too late to run away. What if I meet them and they don't like me? Isaiah flashed a confident smile and gave me a thumbs up. They'll like you, I promise. I'll be right behind you, okay? With his moral support, I found the courage to open that door. It's thanks to him that I found a place to belong here. It took some time for me to get over my initial shyness around the other members of the club, but before long, I considered them to be my dearest friends. We don't always see eye to eye, but every day is more fun when they're around. The first club member I met that day was Tyler Furukawa. To be completely honest, I was afraid of her in the beginning. She's three years older than I am, and she usually has a scary expression on her face. It startled me so much that I actually ran out of the club room when we first met. Her dyed baby blue hair and multiple piercings really stand out, so a lot of other students avoid her out of fear that she might be a delinquent or something. I learned that she's nicer than she lets on, though. Not many people know this, but Tyler works part-time as a barista at a coffee shop. One day after school, I decided to stop by the Moonlit Cafe. I wasn't sure how she would react to me visiting her there, but I was so curious to see Tyler in her work mode that I couldn't help but check it out for myself. I remember peeking into the doorway, smiling brightly when I spotted her behind the counter dressed in her apron. Her usual cool and calm demeanor completely crumbled when she saw me skip over to the register. I ordered a hot chai, and her cheeks flushed pink as she turned away to make my drink. I left the register to take a seat at a nearby table, soaking in the calm atmosphere of the cafe. Quiet chatter was drowned out by the jazz music that played on the radio. Framed photographs were hung up on the walls, mostly artsy depictions of flowers and scenery. Few of them had cards with the prices written on them, in case a customer wanted to take one home. When Tyler arrived with my chai, she placed the mug on the table before me. I could smell the warm spices from the steam. I was about to take a sip when I noticed that she had made a design in the light layer of foam on top of my tea. It was decorated with a group of three beautiful flowers. The cute design instantly brought a smile to my face. It's a shame to drink something so pretty. Not wanting to waste the chai that Tyler made for me, I closed my eyes and took a sip. The warmth of the tea spread through my body, and the spices were a perfectly balanced blend of sweet and spicy. I couldn't stop myself from letting out a high-pitched squeal of delight. It made me really happy. This is so good! I gave Tyler a bright smile, holding the mug in my hands. Thank you, Tyler! It's really cute! Tyler's cheeks flushed with embarrassment, turning her gaze to the side to avoid my sunny expression. Isaiah mentioned that you like flowers, so I... I just... Yes, her nerves getting the better of her. Tyler turned away with her face redder than I've ever seen it before. J just drink it, okay? I will, I replied to her back as she scurried back to the barista counter. While I did feel a bit bad for catching her off guard like that, I have visited the cafe a few times since then. I think that Tyler gradually became used to seeing me stop by. It was a nice place to relax, and the drinks she made for me were always good. Each time, Tyler brought me a hot chai with beautifully decorated flowers on top. The last member of the Alter Boy Club that I met is Connor Hertz, a third year at our school. He is definitely the popular one of the group. With naturally handsome looks and a slim build, a lot of girls from our school confess to him. He works as a model on the side at a department store in the local mall. They even put him on the cover of their fashion magazine. However, Connor once told me that he's actually really self-conscious about his pretty boy looks. It wasn't his dream to be a model at all. What he really wants is to become stronger. I've met his older brothers only once after a session of Alter Blade in the auditorium at our school. With their towering height and big muscles, they were very intimidating to me. I instinctively hid behind Connor when they approached us, before he explained that they were his siblings. 
While Connor was the tallest member of our club, it seems that he didn't inherit their naturally muscular body type. He smiled when he saw them, but I could feel a sense of insecurity beneath that smile. I think that, in Connor's heart, he wishes that he could look more like them. He's very kind, though, and cares for his friends. I pulled a hair clip out of my bag and turned it over my hands with a smile. The clip itself was gold-colored, decorated with a beautiful star crafted from metal. It looked too fancy to be something I would buy for myself, but Connor gave it to me one day after our club meeting had ended. I remember feeling really worried about whether I should accept it or not. I don't think it had any romantic intentions behind it or anything, but it still felt odd to receive a gift from a friend. I remembered that I was putting my dice set back into my bag, getting ready to head home for the day. Connor approached me with a grin, holding his hand out in front of him with a closed fist. My gaze kept flickering between his face and his fist. Does he want something? At first, I was really confused by his behavior. I thought maybe he wanted to do that thing that I sometimes see guys do with their friends. A fist bump? Good job today. I gave him an uncertain smile before lightly bumping my fist against his. Wait, did I do that right? Connor watched my awkward attempt at a fist bump before bursting into laughter. No, no, I wanted to give you this. He wiped a tear from his eye and held out his fist again, gesturing for me to hold out my palm. When I did, he placed a small object into my hand. The hair clips sparkled in the light. I sometimes get extra accessories to my job. Think you can use it? I gingerly turned the clip in my fingers, admiring the colors of the metal star adorning it. Seeing how pretty it was made me feel happy, but that happiness quickly turned into worry. Something like this doesn't suit me. I bit my lip, my copper-colored bangs hiding my face from view. Gifts should be accepted with a smile, but I couldn't help but voice my concern. Are you sure you want to give this to me? I asked, my hands trembling slightly as I stumbled over my words. I mean, it's so pretty. I'm sure it would look better on someone else. You worry too much, Katie. Connor replied, flashing a smile before giving me a reassuring pat on the head. I wanted you to have it. Besides, I'm sure it's hard to see with your hair covering your eyes all the time. Maybe the world will look brighter now, yeah? I never thought of it that way. Growing my bangs along on one side had some advantages, especially for giving me a way to hide myself from the world. It allowed me to block everyone out when my anxiety grew to be too much to handle. Nervously, I pulled my bangs to the side and used the hair clip to hold them in place. The feeling that followed was strange and yet freeing. Unfamiliar emotions of confidence bloomed in my chest. Connor nodded in approval. Much better. It's too embarrassing for me to wear it all the time, but clipping my bangs to the side before every session of Alter Blade gives me a little bit of courage. The star makes me feel like I'm channeling some of Lunaria's confidence. I didn't expect to get that feeling from something as simple as a hair clip. Connor's fan club would surely be upset if they knew that I had received it from him, so I keep it a secret. The club itself was a small, unofficial group at our school, comprised of both girls and boys alike. They appear at every Alter Blade session in the auditorium, holding hand-drawn signs to show their support, and cheering whenever Connor did something cool. The popularity hasn't gone to his head yet, but he will occasionally wave to them with a smile of gratitude. When I joined the Alter Blade Club, I never expected to become friends with students of different ages and personalities. Isaiah knows everything about Alter Blade, and it's fun watching him become animated when talking about the game. Tyler may seem scary at first, but she's really kind and has a surprising creative side. Connor seems like the typical popular kid, but he cares deeply for his friends and has some insecurities of his own. We still have our disagreements from time to time, but school life wouldn't be the same without them. I'm really grateful to Alter Blade for bringing us together and helping me make some new friends. High school will probably fly by faster than any of us expect. Tyler will be graduating this year, and Connor will leave the year after that. We can't stay at school forever, but I love and cherish every member of the Alter Blade Club. For now, we'll all focus on making some fun memories to look back on and enjoy our time together while it lasts. Once the bell that signaled the end of classes rang throughout the school, the students around me scurried to put their books away with lively chatter. Thursday afternoons were more exciting than most because it meant that our Alter Blade Club would be performing another game session in the auditorium. Even if our crowd was smaller than other schools can bring, the exciting atmosphere always made my heart race. I unzipped my school bag and reached inside to make sure I'd remember to bring my bag of dice from home. Connor really scolded me for forgetting them last time, but I'm sure that he was just joking around. My lucky bag of dice was a pale lavender color with embroidered stars and moons, and the dice inside were a vibrant purple with glitter inside. Whenever I use them to play Alter Blade, I like to believe that the dice goddess was on my side. 
Humming a cheerful tune, I stood up from my seat and left the classroom to join Isaiah and the rest of the altar blade club in the auditorium. I didn't know what our game session had in store, but the anticipation was giving me nervous butterflies. Soon enough, we'll be sitting around the table, ready to weave a new tale of magic for the audience. What kind of adventures will we have today? I can't wait!